I shot the same portraits using Bayer Raw, Pro Raw and Hyph on the iPhone 16 Pro and the results genuinely surprised me. After comparing and diving into them, I've learned a few things that has changed how I see these formats. Here's what I found. Quick shoot introduction, high contrast lighting, late afternoon with the sun lower and casting longer directional shadows and to find shots, I wandered around with the model, Katie, and whenever light and shadow were doing something interesting, we stopped to give it a try. In terms of camera setup, I used the iPhone 16 Pro with the Reflex Pro camera app and the G-Series 2x telephoto lens. For Bayer Raw, I shot with manual settings, exposing for the brighter parts of the face, which naturally underexposed the shadows for the dramatic effect that I wanted and I shot the Pro Raw and Hike photos in auto with the exposure bias set to minus something. I avoided manual mode because it doesn't deliver full image quality in processed formats. For example, this Pro Raw shot in manual mode looks good at first glance, but it's clearly missing parts of the usual processing pipeline. The highlights and shadows look like the unprocessed Bayer Raw, and when we lift the shadows to match the auto version, things fall apart. So if you shoot Pro Raw or Hike and you want maximum quality and editing flexibility, shoot in auto. This was my first time shooting this particular style with Pro Raw and Hike. And apart from a couple of accidental manual mode mistakes, both formats really surprised me. Well, let's start with old faithful Bayer Raw because it's the format I've been using exclusively for this type of portrait up to now. As expected, the well-lit, properly exposed parts are full of sharp, natural detail. And since Bayer Raw photos don't get any of Apple's smart HDR processing, the shadows fall into a deep void, giving me that rich contrast that I'm after. You can see how Bayer Raw fits this harsh style really well, and how the style flatters Bayer Raw in return, because these files have noisy shadows. The deeper they are, the noisier they get, excessively so. But since the whole idea is to not lift them, it plays to Bayer Raw's strengths. On the highlight side, when I come across a new scene, I often overexpose the first shot, or the first three. Thankfully, Bayer Raw gives me a generous amount of highlight recovery. It gets tricky though, when there are different highlight intensities in the same image. In this shot, I overexposed Katie by about a stop and a half. I can bring most of it back, but not all of it. And I'm left with a disjointed exposure across her face that's brighter in some areas, darker in others, with no pleasing transition between them. But this is where Pro Raw and Pike come in. With their multi-image merging, capturing a wider exposure range, scenes like this, where Bayer Raw struggles, are where they shine. Here, I covered too much of Katie's face with shadow and underexposed to the highlights, which put Bayer Raw in a no-win situation. Yet Pro Raw and Hive handled this wide exposure range beautifully, and they did so throughout the shoot. Process formats on the iPhone have always been ready to share, clean, sharp, colorful, well-exposed, even in high dynamic range situations. But while they may look similar straight out of the camera, there are key differences between them like how they handle detail, color, and editing. So let's take a look at what sets them apart and some things to be aware of. Pro Raw gives you the flexibility to reduce or remove a lot of Apple's baked in processing, including sharpening, giving you a Bayer Raw-like starting point for editing. That's the best of both, the benefits of Apple's image pipeline with loads of room to make it your own. Fine details and colors are more neutral compared to Hive, which is fully cooked and more heavily processed, hence the file sizes. You mainly see that heavier compression in the highlights, while the shadows can be surprisingly flexible and robust. Throughout most of this shoot, Katie's face was in direct sunlight, and I don't like how Hive's processing handled it. Specular highlights are harsher, skin is overly sharp, and it has a slightly sunburned look with harsher tones. That said, I am pleased with how much I can shape the images. Despite the baked in processing and compression, once edited, you can't tell the difference, likely because my edit involves reduced clarity and texture, which offsets Hive's fixed sharpening. 
So it looks like Pro Roar is best for this type of shoe and in general. But which version of Pro Roar? You have 48 megapixels or 12 megapixels. Well, why would you ever want to shoot anything less than the highest resolution you can? Let's break things down. First of all, when I was editing the Pro Raw photos from my shoot, I noticed that the 12 megapixel versions were consistently brighter than the 48 megapixel versions when I reduced the Pro Raw picture profile. Apple hasn't explained this directly, but looking at the metadata with EXIF tools suggests it's due to a higher baseline exposure value being applied when the Pro Raw picture profile is disabled. This has nothing to do with the camera settings. Baseline exposure tells photo apps to first brighten or darken the entire image by a certain amount before any additional edits are made. 12 megapixel Pro Raw photos likely have a higher baseline exposure because the pixels are binned. Each one gathers four times more light than at 48 megapixels, resulting in a cleaner signal with less noise, allowing the exposure to be safely lifted more. And this should also improve low light performance, which is likely why Apple restrict night mode to 12 megapixels. I also found some other benefits to 12 megapixels as well. This Pro Raw picture profile is actually something called a gain map an 8-bit single channel luminance map stored alongside the image. The map itself doesn't directly alter the image data, it's more like a set of tonal instructions. Apps like Lightroom interpret it to adjust how the shadows are lifted, how the tones are smoothed, and how the local contrast is boosted, typically what we'd call tone mapping. How strongly that map is applied isn't fixed. It's scaled based on metadata using a formula Apple provides, which turns internal values into stops of headroom. 12 megapixel Pro Raw photos usually need less of it, which comes with another benefit I saw during my shoot, reduced background glow. This glow is an unsharp mask halo caused when tone mapping tries to add back contrasts where there's not much detail. The heavier tone mapping in the 48 megapixel shots makes the effect worse. In Bay Aurora it doesn't happen at all because there's no processing of any kind. But the good news is, is you're not stuck with it, in Pro Raw at least. You can just drag the tone map slider down to zero or change the picture profile. But what about sharpness and detail? Surely this is a 48 megapixel win all day. Let's see. When we zoom into these 48 megapixel Pro Raw photos 100%, we can see everything. I love the high level of fine, natural looking details in this beautiful golden hour lighting. But when we bring in some 12 megapixel photos, they appear to be sharper than their 48 megapixel counterparts. But like Hive, not in a good way, because the details aren't as natural, it's like they're etched in. Thankfully, this overly sharpened look is largely because of Lightroom's default sharpening. When we reduce it, 12 megapixels, it's still sharper, but in a more natural way. So why do 12 megapixel Pro Raw photos look sharper? Well, I don't think there's any additional sharpening in the processing pipeline because the baseline sharpen value is the same for both, it's 1.5. I think it's more down to how the 48 megapixel iPhone sensor actually works. At the full 48 megapixel resolution, the iPhone's quad Bayer sensor shares color data between each 2x2 two two block of pixels. That means the image has to be demosaic in a much more complex way, and that process softens the final result compared to what you'd get from a 1x1 one one standard Bayer sensor. So even though the files are technically 8064 by 6048 pixels, you're not getting the full 48 megapixels worth of sharp detail. In real world use, the actual resolving power tends to be closer to 20 to 25 megapixels. But even if the sensor could capture the full 48 megapixels worth of true detail, the lens is another limiting factor. As the iPhone's lenses are very, very small, they are constrained by things like diffraction and optical imperfections, especially towards the edges. And they just can't project a level of detail onto the sensor that matches its density. 
So in terms of what I wanted from the shoot, I honestly thought that Old Faithful Bay Aurora would be my clear favourite, but all the formats delivered. Hyphen in particular really surprised me and it was great to explore Apple's documentation and metadata to unpack how ProRAW works. Looking more broadly at your own shooting, you shoot in whichever format you like and never justify yourself to anybody. I made this video so you could make an informed decision, not for me to declare which one is best. So I hope you enjoyed that, hope you've learned something. I'll see you in the next one.